Hi, hope everybody's doing fine. Uh, I've received several comments and emails on the last videos uh, saying that they really like the work, but the, one of the comments seems to be throughout all the emails that could we make the videos just a little bit shorter, you know, 15, uh, 20 minutes is kind of long to try to take in a video and about Lightroom or Photoshop when you just need help on a specific subject. So today we're going to use Lightroom and we're going to talk about uh, how we handle contrast when we're taking pictures at high noon. So, you know, it's, we always shoot for a better timing of light in the golden hour or the blue hour so we don't have these harsh shadows. So as you, see, as you can see here, this is from a local farm in the Denton area. They have exotic animals, but I was out there in the middle of the day and while the scene was really good, we had some really harsh shadows in here and we need to kind of tone those down because this really takes away from this scene. So uh, as I usually do, I'll start out in lens correction, remove chromatic aberration and enable the lens profile so it straightens it up a little bit. And then I go to my basic panel. Now we want to try to adjust the light so that we don't see these shadows so much and it's not really playing on the camels. If we increase our exposure, all we're doing is affecting the whole picture and we're starting to blow out the camels. So that's not helping us at all. If we bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows, that affects some of it. And let's bring the highlights back up again. But we still have these harsh shadows uh, in the middle of our scene. So we'll, we'll try to do the best we can to, to clean that up. We'll give it the whites a little bit. We'll take in the blacks the best we can. Bring the highlights down a little bit more, which will allow us to bring up the exposure a little bit. And we can hit our midtones by using the color grading. This is something that most people don't know about, but if you go to color grading, this top item right here is midtones. And say we hit areas that we can't, don't hit with highlights and shadows. Uh, but even then, using the midtones, we're starting to blow out the rump of the camel, uh, and we're really not getting any effect uh, of really toning this down too much. So that's probably about the best we can do under these conditions. And what I'm going to do is make a virtual copy of this photo. And here it is right here. It's got a little tag at the end of it. So here's our main photo. And we're going to reset it. This is what it looked like in the beginning. This is what our virtual copy looks like. This is the best we could do about fixing it. And now what we're going to do is come back and do a new technique to try to make it look better than the best we could do using the basic sliders in Lightroom. So we want to start out by doing the same thing like we did before. We're going to do our lens corrections. We'll go to basic and hit auto. And then uh, what we're going to do, I kind of like the way Lightroom does it in auto, although we still have very harsh shadows here that we are definitely going to get rid of. We want to go to our masking panel. We want to grab the radial gradient and we're going to draw our radi a radial gradient across the shadow area. So we want the core, the 100% area, and the main part of the shadow. And we want our feather to be out so that we don't see that start change as we go around. Now we'd like to try to get off as much as we can in the bright light area because that we don't want to really affect that. We only want to affect the shadows. If we grab our sizer right here and bring it down, you see it affects both sides of our radial gradient. But if we hold our Option key on a Mac or Alt on Windows, it will only move one side. So that allows us to make changes without affecting the whole uh, radial gradient. And we'll come over here and grab this a little bit and bring it in. And that's about where I want my radial gradient. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increase our exposure just a little bit here. We're going to bring down the contrast because that will soften out the edges in the shadow. We're going to bring up our shadows. Might even bring up the whites a little bit. Bring up the blacks. It'll kind of flatten it out a little more. And that's what we're looking for here. A real flat effect because we don't need these sharp edges in, in, the, uh, in the shadow to show up. We might even bring in the dehaze just a little bit. Now we do that, it makes it look a little overexposed, so we can bring our exposure down just a little bit. Look at our highlights. 
Look at the shadows a little more. And just kind of play with your sliders till you get that shadow as pretty much, you know, undefined edges as we can. Might bring the dehaze in a little more and then bring the exposure down. All right, so if we look at our before and after, we've taken it a lot further than we did with our basic sliders. And just to make it a little better, what we can do is we can crop this. We'll bring it down to about right here, get rid of some of the, the distractions on the side. And then after we've cropped it, let's go down here to effects and let's bring our vignette in just a little bit. And that kind of takes away from the edges so we see our camo a little better. And we can feather that out so it's not quite as stark on the edges. And there we have our photograph. So now if we look at this compared to our virtual copy of what we tried to do without using the radio gradient, see how much different that shadow is? And granted it's cropped. Let's crop in on this one just to make things equal. So we can see a good before and after on this. We'll even, even do the vignetting a little bit. Okay, so now let's look at our virtual copy. That's without using radio gradient. And here it is using our radio gradient. See how much better this looks? It doesn't really take away from the camel as much as it does when this dark shadow is just hanging there in the photograph. I hope this helps out. If uh, you have any problems or some more techniques that you'd like to look at, please send me an email. I'll be glad to help you out.